Question number one, do you like sex? Okay, so uh, let's get started. We have about 90 minutes when I just remember that right. So my name is Matt. Um, this is my third round of um, More Than a Man. And my connection with Eva is about, uh, she came in 2015, 16 or 17, I can't really remember, to the self-service practitioner training that I was teaching in Bali. It was a 30-day training. It was just one of the marathon training, the longest one. And um, so she became a self-service practitioner. And um, yeah, we know each other since then. And uh, she asked me then a few years back, if I am willing to teach on her more than a man training, because she knows that I'm a complete consent geek. Um, I, she knows about me. I've mastered the ejaculatory choice. So we can talk about that later a little bit. And um, yeah, and I'm working with men since um, yeah, about five years or so. A few words, a few more words about myself. Um, I'm a tantric practitioner since, God, 27 years since. 1998 or so and uh, yeah I'm a total geek and I um, totally dedicated and I turned every stone around that I could find and my intention is um, to uh, give as much input that I possibly can for you to get your questions answered or find a deeper layer of yourself whatever that is um, I have been uh, around the world a few times. I've been teaching in different um, Tantra schools. I had my own Tantra school. Um, I went in 2014 into consent work and uh, trauma research. Uh, I've kind of decoded the polyvega theory. If you want to know more about that one, it's really, really fun to know. And um, I have here around my screen, a lot of things that I'm going to show you. So we will go into some slides and um, so that you get kind of some pictures about the words that I'm sharing with you and uh, teaching as well in a de-armoring training. I finished just on Sunday a seven day, no, it's not true, a 11 day training with 40 people on de-armoring, hands on work and stuff like that. I have as well um, three children. Um, the oldest one is 31, uh, nearly 30. The other one and one son, 18, was married for seven years. I've lived all kind of sexual uh, relationship dynamics that you can imagine that existing. Um, and I've uh, written a book you see there called um, Orgasmic Blueprint. And um, um, I'm so super passionate about that work. Uh, specifically, you know, I have been working with um, women for many, many years. So I just, uh, as a body worker and as a facilitator, um, have done this so-called de-armoring, sexual de-armoring, cervical activation, you know, and kind of just has a lot to do with the polyvega theory, has a lot to do with the nervous system, how it all works, with social engagement, how we create safety in the relationship and all that kind of stuff. And there is so much more that I can talk about, but I, it's so hard to put that <laughs> in one hour, you know. And I just really want to just like nail it down as much as I possibly can. Um, what I will do now is before Gabriel, you said you just will leave pretty soon. Um, I have done that in the last call as well. And I drop a link here that each and one of you can um, book a free one-on-one -on -one session with me, about half an hour, 45 minutes, something like that. So feel free and entitled to take um, this link and make use out of that. And if you feel like booking now, book now, um, because my time is very fast, quickly booked out. So please jump on if you want that. I'm as well, 50, I'm not 57, I'm 55. So um, that what I'm doing, this tantric stuff keeps young. And um, when I'm in relationship, what I am at the moment with a woman, um, and I've done that before as well, my lovemaking or my sex, when I do it, is normally not under two hours. I love sex. And kind of teaching 
women in the past everything about orgasmic stages and you know and expansion and this kind of sensual and sexual arousal thing and merging and being in this in this wave um has been very successful over many years and um but i changed my line of work that i actually mainly work with men at the moment and i really love that that i teach men and show men what i have found that I can show men that they find that themselves. So, so that everything that I'm saying here and showing you today um, is not a belief system or anything. It's just, it needs to be provable for yourself. So I just want to make it as applicable as I possibly can so that it needs to resonate in your nervous system. It needs to resonate as emotions. It needs to resonate as well on the rational mental level. So don't believe any word that I'm saying, so just ask question, prove it and really make it yours. And when it's yours, nobody can take it away from you. And that's my intention so that everything that you're getting out of this little time that we have, so that you have, that it has the biggest impact in your life. So another question, um, there are different sexual orientation. I assume that each and one of you is heterosexual. So if you're heterosexual, raise your hand. Okay, um, if you're bisexual, raise your hand. If you're homosexual, raise your hand. So that all sexual orientations are welcome. Yeah, I'm all and nothing. <laughs> so I've, 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 I've tried everything. Um, so what I would like to show you first is, and um, uh, making it kind of applicable, Eva told me as well that it's most of you important to come into feelings and being in connection with your feelings. And first I would like to make a distinction and I can't make that in, in German and I could not make it in German. So I just want to make it in English. And the distinction is between feelings and emotions. Yeah. And this has been one of the biggest ahas in my life. So when I'm talking about feelings, is everything that you are aware of here right now that is below your neck in your body. Feelings and sensations. Yeah? A feeling normally takes about 90 seconds to two minutes max. Yeah? So it's just joy, yeah, it's just anger, uh, it's, it's sadness, and it's fear. Yeah? So there are four main dynamics of them. There's another one in between, disgustness. Yeah, I don't know how to put that in, but these are the four. Joy, anger, fear, and sadness. So there's a, there's a quote for that, that feelings are for dealing with now. So we need our feelings to be engageable for what is happening here right now. So there are four feelings yeah, joy, anger, sadness, and um, fear. And you can mix them up, joy with anger and fear with sadness, and then you get something out of that that calls shame. And then you get something out of that that calls guilt. Yeah, When we suppress them, they're always looking a kind of a sidetrack to come out. So important is we need to make our accessibility to these feelings, you know, on a level of emotional intelligence. So we need to bring that down that we, f that we feel them earlier so that we can express them. Yeah. So emotions are as well for sadness, anger, joy, and fear. But an emotion lasts longer than two minutes. So when you have an undercurrent of an emotion, like anger, for example, this is what most men have, suppressed anger, and they're getting kind of um, outrageous when something is happening, and it's a continuum, then it's something from the past. So again, feelings are for dealing with what is now, and emotions are for healing the past. 
a feeling is only maximum two minutes, but an emotion lasts longer than two minutes. Yeah, so this is that stuff that we chew on and feel and think and then trying to get rid of. So this is that stuff where we kind of need to dig deeper. Yeah. And there is a saying about that, what you resist will persist. So the, the sport around that is diving deeper into the shit. Diving deeper into that what we normally trying to resist and avoid. And this is where the journey of, of integration and healing and connection and all that is happening. So you have been playing a little bit with Eva and you have touched an object. Yeah. And specifically when I'm working with people, um, you know, waking up the hands and feeling that on the, on, on, on the, uh, uh, fingertips or in the hand, um, gives you access to a lot of pleasure and joy. Yeah. And then people come into my work and say, yes, yeah, I just want to feel more. Um, and then they start feeling that stuff. And, and we go into that in a few moments and then and, and, I, and I show you more. So they start feeling with their hands and something in their brain is getting short circuit and they start feeling more but they're not start feeling only more pleasure and joy. They start to feel everything as well, more anger, more fear and more sadness. So when you start to feel more, it's not only the good feelings, it's about everything. And that includes your emotions. So stuff will come up and that will never change. It's just the question how you deal with that. And to come back to the two quotes, feelings are for dealing with now to create intimacy and connection and emotions are for healing the past. So if you sit something and you project that on your partner that goes on for a few hours, has nothing to do with your partner, has to do with your past most of the time with some of our parents. Okay, does that make sense so far? Okay, perfect. Then, um, I've heard a few of you saying that already. Um, it is this part of um, boundaries, desires, and expression of what is. So when you put that into the terms of feelings and emotions, it is, there's a formula about that. And this formula is universal for every human being the same. And the formula is you need enough time to notice what you feel, to trust it, to value it and to communicate. If one of this is not possible, so if you can't notice what's going on, you probably somehow under pressure for some reason or whatever. Yeah. Okay. So again, you need to notice, you need to trust, value and communicate. So no rushing, no pushing, no forcing. Take a deep breath. <sighs> okay, I think I need more time. Yeah? Gold. <laughs> okay, so let's do that one. Oops, and then I guide you into a little bit of theory and feed your mind and um and then i've uh, filled that up with some um uh, uh, deeper meaning okay so the invitation is sit relaxed like uh, gerald is already you sit back 
and uh, get comfortable so that you actually lean with with your back somehow somewhere like that your spine and your shoulders are relaxed so that our spine our nervous system our body is not set up for work most of you might working on <laughs> that position on the computer but that it's not physical work because there's a different um gabriel thanks for joining today you will get the recording and you can watch the rest at any time thanks for joining bye so first of all whatever you have in your hand is the first step that um and this kind of looks stupid because it's it's something black on the black background so whatever you have in your hand your mind gives that a label you yeah? know you know what it is you know what to use it for and you know the purpose and we can bypass that in an instant we can just go to the next level and the next level is your haptic information so this is for example the temperature of that what you have in your hand is it smooth or is it rough is it round or sharp the density is it heavy or light yeah so you get a lot of haptical information about what you have there in your hand and whatever your speed of touch is I invite you to slow down your speed of touch by half. And then you slow it down by half again, so that you get really slowly. And then I invite you to explore with your fingers, with your skin on that object. And feel free to close your eyes or open your eyes and touch it with one hand or hold it with one hand and feel with the other hand over. So whatever works for you is important to do it in your own way. And what we're looking for here is this little bit tinglish electromagnetic sensation that's pleasant or even pleasurable. It just feels nice somehow. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't go anywhere. And you might feel it in your fingertips or between your fingers or your palm, maybe the back side of your hand. It can be just a micro spot. It doesn't have to be a big thing, just like a micro sensation. And when you find it somewhere, for the next two, three minutes, I invite you just to stay there and just explore, experience and discover. For some of you it's easier and for some of you it's not so easy and it doesn't really matter. What matters is that you just give it a try. And that you will stay in that connection and recognizing that you moving your hands, your fingers by choice toward the felt sensation.
It's not about love, it's not about relationship, it's not about sex. It's just this tinglish sensation, subtle somewhere in your skin, in your hands, in your fingers. Okay, and then slow down your movement till you stop. Stay there for a moment. And then for a moment notice what you notice in your body. Sensations, feelings, emotions. Or none of that, maybe feel a little bit bored or tired or your mind is running in thousand miles per hour so whatever there is that all is welcome of you and then I invite you to opening up your eyes Bring your attention back to the screen. And let's have another little round, sharp and crisp. What did you notice? Please. Okay, cool. Thank you. And everything that you feel is valid because you feel it, every one of you. So what you sense, what you feel is important. And what you notice and what you express is important. Okay, cool. So you're ready for changing gears? <laughs> yeah, so I will... I, I, I will, I will blow your mind in the next half an hour good is that this is recorded and my invitation to you is watch the recording again because i will tell you so much that you probably get 50 percent max yeah so we have more nerve ending in our hands than anywhere else on our body except our mouth and our genitals yeah and because we have so many nerve ending in our hands there's a massive part in our brain dedicated to the feeling sense in our hands. Specifically, the hands are tools to feel. So this is what when I say that you, you, you feel something with your hand. Yeah? So you feel that here now. You don't feel that last week. You don't feel that, I don't know, this is just here. It's on or it's off. It's on or it's off. Obvious, right? This nerve ending here in your finger is sending a signal somewhere in your brain. And you have more nerve ending in your genitals than actually in your hands and more in your mouth than in your hand. That's, I guess, so the reason why it feels so good when we touch our genitals. So because there are so many nerve ending in our hands dedicated to feelings, when the hands will get that what you do here, with an object and feeling it, the rest of your body will get it because there's this big part dedicated in your brain. Um, unfortunately, if we were just getting our dicks out and start feeling with our genitals, that would feel absolutely inappropriate and we probably would so overwhelm that we would shut down that we couldn't feel anything. So therefore, the hands is a good starting point. Yeah. So 
the hands are important. And one important piece here is that each and one of you has done that. It doesn't matter if you felt the big thing or not. You were in action. So you choose the action towards a sensation. And you have not done that for me. You have not done that for your partner. You have not done that for anybody in the world. You have chosen an action for your own sensation in your hands. And that is the key component of this entire feeling work using your skin and your hands to feel. And that is a lifelong process. So you can choose to do that and dive deeper or you can try to work that out with your mind and you will never go anywhere. So, by saying that, I will start sharing my screen. This is what you have just done, yeah, each and one of you. So you have um, um, moved your hand, so you have used your motor cortex as a part in, in your brain that is making decisions to move. Yeah? That's sending signals into your hands and you go into an action. So, and then you have, you know, all this nerve ending there in your hands and your hands is sending back information into your brain. So you feel why you are in action. And that in itself creates a short circuit in your brain. So you go in action for yourself. There's no person included. There's nothing else happening. It's just you doing an action for yourself. So... For some of you, it might be difficult or even impossible to feel much, specifically when another person is included or when you feel an object. So the question to you is now, and my invitation is for you just to unmute yourself and just say it in popcorn style, Why is it difficult for you to feel when you are in action for yourself? And whatever pops up is true and right. And I'll write it down here. Just a few. Why is it difficult to feel when you're in action? Programmed. Oh. Uh -huh. Like programmed. If, if one is in action, one is not receiving. Well, yeah. Not being aware that I feel something. Okay. Not... Aware of feeling. Erwartungen. Uh, expectation. Being distracted. Mm -hmm. Or maybe bored, but that's also kind of expectations. <laughs> yes. Yeah, being occup occupied by thinking about the action, like the, the, the yeah, then yeah, that's it. Yeah. Trained. To not feel anything. Oh, yeah. Not allowing myself to the pleasure route. Mm. Yeah. Safety. Sa it doesn't feel safe or. Um, safety to, to, to not uh, let uh, express feeling. To not uh, let feeling be expressed. Like uh, not a good safety way as well. Uh, so. Um. <laughs> No, perfect. It's, it's, I, I know what you mean. So, so we have done that now, so, uh, found, I don't know, eight or ten of that. And that's not the first time I do that. Yeah. So other people say shame, guilt, fear, beliefs. They don't like me, re fear of rejection, bad memories, expectations. We had that. Being too selfish, conditionings. Yeah. So we are trained in it. Um, going too fast or faster, uh, pleasing, um, getting outside of the sensation, distractions, context and time, needing stronger, harder, use to more intensity to feel more. It's too subtle, boredom, falling asleep. Uh, the type of relating you do that with, thinking, shame, memory, drama, fear, stress, trauma, condition, society, tension, control. You see, there is a lot of stuff going on in our nervous system, in our emotional, in our feeling body that keeps us away from feeling with our hands. Feeling stuff up or feeling with our skin. So if this is 
difficult or impossible for some of you, then the only thing that we have left or that you have left is when you touch another person that you need to get a response from another person. Yeah. So when there's another person involved, I call that their pleasure is your pleasure. So you do something, so you have your action here, your, your motor, and another person is involved, your partner, and all what you do is you need to do something to get a response back that this person feels good about what you do, that you can feel good about yourself, what you have just done. Make sense? Okay, so the idea here is that um, we kind of turn that around so, so that you literally um, make your sensory inflow, your skin, what you feel in your hands by your own choice, by dedication, your, pri your priority. So you, you need to put what you feel with your hand when you touch somebody, your partner, you need to put that first. And secondary, what comes back is an extra, is a bonus, it's like the cream on the cake. But you need to feel yourself first and on top of that, what comes back. This is the biggest secret in this entire line of work. So, and this is an absolutely choice. If you take that in, you let that in and you practice that. This is why Eva is doing that so much with you guys. Or if you think this is just boring, I don't know why I'm doing that. That's why you do it. You need to put that in as your default. You have to make that conscious choice that you need to feel yourself. Okay, so I don't know what the, the, the next, uh, next slide is. Yeah, and as I said that here, you put this direct route, so the inflow first, and the indirect route, you put that second. All right, so keep that picture in mind, direct route and indirect route. Direct route, you just feel it, yeah? Indirect route, what is coming back? When you have something in your hand, is nothing coming back? And can you make the conscious choice that what you feel has priority when you touch another person? So what does it say about yourself? Is nothing is, um, if you can't feel anything or nothing would come back if you touch an another person. I've done thousands of hours of experience with that. And my capacity to feel with my hands is absolutely through the roof. When I, for example, make love, I'm not feeling with my hands, I'm feeling with my body, and I feel with my cock. And what my partner tells me is just like, oh my God, you are so present in your penis. Because I feel. Makes a huge difference. Okay, so this is about touch. Yeah? Now I want to feed your mind on another level. So um, this is a system and I will break it down for you in the next five to ten minutes. So the first thing is this square. This is your base. And your base is everything that is within your individual domain what you have a right to, and what you are responsible for. And that includes your body, your feelings, your emotions, your thoughts, your beliefs, and everything that has to do with what you're capable of perceiving in life. Individual autonomy, your boundaries, your limits, your desires, everything that you want and that you don't want that has or maybe has not anything to do with anybody else. Yeah, It's just your box. Okay, so um, some of you might have heard about the three-minute game. Have you heard about the three-minute game? Okay, so the three-minute game is a dynamic 
comes from a mentor and a teacher I've been studying with uh, about 10, 15 years ago, starting with, that every human engagement in its raw form is divided in four different dynamics. Yeah? Okay, so let's start with that one. And when you put this, so, so this is what my book is about. It's like a, it's a blueprint, it's a map. It's like you, you can use that in human engagement when you're with your partner, with your lover. So in this engagement zone, the four different dynamics are, it is your action and it is for you. It's what you desire. Yeah. And this is the dynamic that we just have done with your hands. So when you are in action, can you feel for yourself? So it's either your action that is for you, or it is your action and it's for the other, it's for them. It's either your action for you, or it's either your action for them. Or it is their action for you, or their action for them. These are the four main dynamics in every human engagement. You are in action, it's for you. You are in action, it's for them. They are in action, it's for you. They are in action, it's for them. These are the four components of human engagement. There's more to that, but this is the raw format and this is why this is so important to have your action, so you touching something and feeling it, needs to be in place. So, let's dive deeper into that. Um, so, when it's their action and it's for you, yeah. so you want somebody else is doing something for you, Consent plays an important role here. So if, if it's their action for you, you need to ask, can you do something for me? Can you give me a massage? Can you stroke my cock? Can you kiss me on my cheek? Can you tell me that I'm beautiful even if I'm embarrassed? Yeah. So you ask somebody else for an action that you want to happen towards you. It's an agreement. And I said that he already, can you do something? Yes, I can do something. So then the other person goes in action or you go in action for the other person. And the other one, what is not an agreement is permission. So you go in action, like with the object, with your partner and ask your partner, can I touch your boobs? Can I squeeze your ass? Can I lick you? Can I kiss you? Can I, you know, I don't know. Can I f fuck you? <laughs> yeah. So it's the permission part of consent. And the permission part is, can I do such and such? Yes, you can. Or no, you cannot. And this is where the polyvagal theory comes in. If there is neurologically no permission between the engagement and you provide an action for yourself, the other one's nervous system will shut down. If you turn that around, somebody is doing something to you without you having given permission, your nervous system will shut down. Yeah, can I see your finger if that resonates? Yeah, so am I on the right track? You following me? Okay. So the important piece here is that... Um, this is the raw format of it. So now here comes a really super important question. So if you can't ask for what you want, what are you doing instead? And please feel free to unmute yourself for just for a minute or so. If you can't ask for what you want, what are you doing instead? Hoping. Hoping. Manipulating. Manipulating. Not doing. Say that again. Not doing. Not doing, yes. Simply trying. <laughs> Simply trying, yes. Expectation. Expectations, yes. So, because we have all needs and we have all desires and we all want and need to get them met, we're all doing something. And because it's so difficult in life, when we not have learned that, 
And important is when you do something that this is not wrong, it's just the conditioning that we all have. And when we talk about shadows and engagement in shadows, this is where stuff is happening. If, you, if we don't have permission and we do it anyway, this is where the society shadows of rape, stealing, perpetrator, abuse, violation and war is happening. Because simply not having permission. And I talk in a few minutes about how permission in relationship works. And that will just blow your socks. And the other one is when there is no agreement in these dynamics and you want it to happen anyway, it's expectation, exploitation, entitlement, the lazy dude or the freeloader. So on the other side, when it's about your limits and it's for them, so where you're either in action or it's their action, if you can't say no, What are you doing instead? Say yes. Say yes. <laughs> yes, I'm guilty of that. I, th I think you hurt yourself if you don't say no. You hurt yourself, yeah. Uh, get out of the contact. Yes, get out of the contact. Uh, flucht. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not sure the, the word flight. in English. Yes, flight. Right. Yeah, running. The running other away. things, uh, he's right. Yes, he's, he's right. Tell me more. He's on. Uh, he do the the right things. So he don't know. It's not. Uh, he he thinks he's. He makes the the things right, for you. Huh? He don't uh, see his thoughts. So so if you can't say no, just 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 give me an example. Just like if you can't say no. If When I can say no, the other the, my partner uh, thinks what he do is okay. Yeah, and well, what I so so you think that what they do is okay, so then it's good. Yes. Okay, good. So you 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 obey or you just go along. The uh, the other part, the partner I communicate uh, is the feedback uh, is not not there, and so he goes on. Okay. Okay. okay good. So let yeah. it happen, more. Say again. Let it happen. Let it happen. Yes. Yeah. Enduring. So, so the shadows here is if people do stuff without asking permission and you let it happen and you don't express your boundaries or your limits, the typical shadows is victim mentality, enduring, trauma responses, going along and being passive. Yeah. And you see between this shadow here and that shadow here, this is the permission line. These are the permission shadows if there is no permission given. But now here comes the thing for most of us, and I'm guilty of every little piece of that. If people don't ask for what they want and we going in action anyway, it's that we just constantly doing like the indirect route, we just do something to get a response that we feel loved, that we feel included, and that we feel appreciated, is the burnout, is the pleaser, give to get, martyr, the do-gooder, nice guy, nice girl, the slave. Yeah? So we do and we provide something to get that response that we're feeling loved. This is when we are going in action without being requested. So, for example, you have on the other side somebody have a freeloader or, a, or, or an entitled person And we constantly providing, giving, making sure the other person feels happy. We just uh, cook and we clean and we just do all that stuff. Yeah. And the, the consequences are burnout or the pleaser or the nice guy. And when you go back to this very, very little thing, so we go in action for the other person without them being requested and asked, you will end up here in the indirect route 
because you don't do it for yourself because you can't fear yourself. You just do it to get that response to be liked and to be loved. You set yourself up for relationship misery. Okay, so I have a little bit more to share. And um, so what I want to say is if this middle part here, your action for you, so you feel for yourself or their action for you, so where you learn to receive, if this doesn't exist in your relationship, this is the only thing that is happening in relationship in one way or the other. Intimate relationship or friendship or family ship or any ship. <laughs> Yeah, this is what is left. So now I just want to tell you one more thing in relationship. And, and some of you are in relationship, I imagine. If you ask every five seconds your partner, can I do this? Is that okay if I kiss you? Is it, you know, it's a relationship killer. Don't do that. But how can you bridge that? If I'm going in relationship with another person, that's how I do it. I asked, so I created something, and that's in the book as well, it calls the four pillars of relating. And the first pillar is self-love and self-care. Yeah, I can say no, I express my feelings, my, I express my emotions, I, autonomy, self-agency. The second pillar is I ask my partner for permission once. And I will tell to my partner and, and write it down or listen to it again. I, 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 I say to my partner, do I have permission to do with any part of my body, on any part of your body, whatever, whenever, however I want to touch you? Yes, you have permission. And you take care of your limits. Can you repeat it, please? Yes, 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 yes. And because it's so cool, it's so important. You, you ask your partner once, do I have infinite permission to touch you with any part of my body, on any part of your body, whenever, however, and wherever I want? Like the object, without objectifying your partner. And you need to get a verbal yes. And that means, and you are responsible for your limits or your boundary if they come up. It's not your responsibility, it's your partner's responsibility. And the same permission you give your partner. Hey, you have permission to touch me with every part of your body, on every part of my body, whenever, however, wherever you want that. I take care of my limits. If, if, um, if my partner says no, you don't uh, have the permission. Then you uh, well then then you ask what what is allowed, or you ask okay so we can individualize that. If you want that, if you want me to ask you every time, then let's negotiate that. Do I have infinite permission to hold your hand? Yeah. So 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 the communication part has to come from you to initiate it, and you you need to get clear about what is allowed and what isn't. Yeah? Cool. Okay, so then there is, a, there is the third layer, what is agreement, um, and there is a fourth layer. Feel free to reach out. I just want to bend a little bit time because there's so much more to that. So, um, But the important piece is the permission piece that you can feel yourself on your partner. Yeah? Okay, so now... And I just really want to make it short and crisp and hope I can get it going in five minutes about sexuality. So this one is a, is a time frame. It's about sexual arousal here, being horny and turned on. And this one is the time. How long can you be horny and being turned on? This is what most people know about the foreplay. Yeah. So the foreplay and the point of no return lasts in average in human encounter five to six and a half minutes. Yeah, this is how long intercourse lasts. When you do that with your hands, when you feel and do all this kind of stuff, feeling yourself, you release oxytocin in your system. 
is a neurotransmitter on hormone that makes you feel good and create bonds. And when you get turned on and you get horny, you release dopamine. This is where you want more of. You get really into it and kind of want to kind of just like, yeah, climax. And orgasm releases the most dopamine. So when you climax or you're coming or you have an agenda of orgasm, this is where you can't go back. So when you climax, the show is over. So what we know as orgasm and climax. And above climax, um, there's nothing happening anymore. Climax, thing is done. And this is what we have all conditioned ourselves in through pornography. Do you know one porn? You know every porn. Yeah? Because it ends with an ejaculation. I would say 99% or so. So, as I said, there are already seven and a half minutes. Um, and when you climax, you release a neurotransmitter that calls serotonin. And serotonin, um, when that comes up, you feel euphoric and feel really good about what is happening. Yeah, that's why orgasm feels so good. And when serotonin is dropping, you release prolactin. And prolactin is that what women release when they breastfeed. It shuts your sexual energy down, and that's why you lose an erection after you had a climax. And then serotonin drops, and then dopamine drops, and then oxytocin drops. And this is a so-called sexual or orgasmic hangover that can last between two hours and up to seven days, or even 21 days. Yeah. So if you feel like your sexual energy is just somewhere in the basement, it's probably the reason that your body is taking care of it, not getting it up because it prevents your sexual energy to get out. So that's the reason when I have sex, I have sex for two, three hours, but I don't ejaculate. Okay, so this is one part of that. I have talked about in the beginning about the armoring because we men we have this contraction sympathetic clenching pattern yeah it's a sympathetic nervous system response and to get away from this response we need to learn to relax into the parasympathetic into that part of expansion and this is where expansion and relaxation happens is when you start feeling with your hands and when you start opening up the inflow, you release all this oxytocin here. And what that does, it relaxes your nervous system. It's, an, it's a neurotransmitter for self-regulation. So you learn to create a relaxed arousal in your nervous system when you practice that. And this is happening through direct pleasure, that what we have done with the object in sensuality, in sexuality, in intimacy and proximity with your partner. So this, um, when you just start with relaxed arousal, the so-called foreplay, that is not going over the edge of the point of no return, and you start to get horny, the key component is to play with your horniness under, below the point of no return the point of contraction, the point of the goal, the point of going somewhere. And then you release serotonin and instead in a spike, it just creates a level of euphoria in your body, in your nervous system. And what that does, it releases endorphins. So this where your heart chakra or your heart or your, your, your thymus gland is getting activated, where you feel connection and love with somebody. And then through breathing, you release melatonin. Yeah? What happens then when you play there, um, within the three-minute game or in any kind of stuff that you are into, that might be, um, so forget all that, might be BDSM or any kind of pleasure and play, it is extremely rejuvenating. It can be any kind of kink. It can be fun. It can be tantra, whatever it is, but when you can stand there between 15 and 30 minutes in this field of direct inflow, of feeling, of the sensation, 
in connection with what you perceive in your nervous system, you start to release DMT that causes demetrial tryptamine in your cerebrospinal fluid and it activates your um, stem cell activation. So it keeps you young, it keeps you active, it keeps you vital, it keeps you healthy. And so where sex, sexual energy and connection can become a spiritual experience through DMT. And it rises the level of your awareness and consciousness and it creates connection and unity with your partner and literally a form of transformation. And this is what I call the bliss state. And each and one of you has access to this bliss state through the sensory inflow and the release of oxytocin and feeling yourself. Okay, I stop that here. Time is over. You did a fantastic job. I have hopefully put all that stuff in your mind. Let that rumble and let that move through. And I need to leave in latest three, four minutes and we are already on the time and I want to respect our time agreement. But I would like to have a check out with you guys and want to hear what has been resonating and how do you feel right now after all this information. The last insight was just super interesting, having this hormonal chart, which was totally new to me, mm -hmm. basically, you know, separating, you know, ejaculation from orgasm, from sex, you know, this is just a really, really interesting um, piece of information for me, because before that, um, I've heard when it came to Tantra that people, you know, they can withhold their semen. And this mm -hmm. sounded to me like something extremely challenging and very performance orientated. But, you know, staying below this kind of point of no return to me now makes totally sense. Yeah. And um, if that resonates with you, this is exactly what I teach men how to do that without having this performance bullshit. Okay, next one. How often do you have sex like this? Um, in the week, in the month? Sometimes twice a day. And then sometimes three times a week only. But then when I don't have a partner, I have a self-pleasure practice. So a, 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 a practice of cultivating my own sexual energy. And I do that when I'm on my own. You know, I have a practice of half an hour a day, just like for, for keeping the juice flowing. Do you reach the, the, um, the alone? Do you reach what you explained to us with DTTS? D DMT, dimethyltryptamine, the stuff that is in ayahuasca. Um, it it kind of goes there, but it's a different thing. It's much more intense when I'm doing that with a partner. Yeah. It's 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 the 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 training for the real deal. Okay, next. I had a, I had this blowing your mind um, phenomena, what you said. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Uh, um, 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 for me, it, it's like it, it, it all gives, I had the whole time the feeling the answer lies somewhere there. So it gives like, um, so, so it is um, this, I could not follow all and I need to revisit uh, many things of that, but this um this um, um square um, I mean, um with these um, there's a lot of lot of topics in there for me um and um and also i i have said it a few times in the group i have quite a good connection to feelings and body and mm -hmm. self love I, I come in these states quite well but it all doesn't really fit together with me so so and somehow there's a lot of i think it's it's really i'm really curious on learning more from that um so um yeah um, thank you um, cool. please reach out at any time so to me there's a feedback to you matthias uh i think it's much better prepared than last time it was easier to follow for me and not only because i heard it second time so these drawings were really really good and it's really motivating to to do the training yeah mm, all right Cool. Thank you. There are so many interesting uh, information. So I wish to shorten the starting and uh, uh, not so talk so much about the uh, uh, personal things. 
to the beginning when you have so much things, interesting things to tell us. So um, we, 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 if we lost half an hour, no? it could be 10, and then we had more time for now to ask and, and talk about that. Yeah. Um, th thanks. I, I appreciate that feedback. And what I offer, I have, for example, an, 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 an online platform. And on that online platform, I have every Monday from 7 till 8.30, um, a call like we do here, where I share all that, what we just talked about. So people come with topics and um so it's a. It comes this platform with the with the book, and it comes with um, this ninety minute calls per week, and it costs uh, no four hundred euro per year. So it's just literally it's a no brainer. It literally costs nothing, and sometimes there are five or ten people. So you all all of you are welcome. Please reach out, and I can send you the link, and you can join at any time. Sorry, but again, when you mention your book, are these topics you just spoken all, all also in the book? They're all in the book here. Okay, show me your blown up mind. Yes. Um, that there's quite a lot to do, quite a lot to find out, to figure out. And yeah, but uh, a bit, I'm a bit sad about that, but also curious about that. So, and let's see where the, where we'll be in the next uh, two years or something like that. So. Yeah. The great thing is that it's never too late to start. And the earlier you start, the better. And everybody has, has a starting point somewhere. And I can relate with that sadness. Sometimes I have people there, there are 20, they're coming to my courses. And I, w I wished I would have been 20 when I started. I was end 20, I was 29. So, but this, 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 so, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I have a, I have a question. So, you you never have an orgasm then? Oh, I have I have I have hundreds of orgasms, but I don't have a climax. So I don't get the difference. A climax is you 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 enter the field and then you drop. The horniness is gone. I enter the orgasmic field and it's a little bit like as if I'm capable of pushing a pause button and I can wave. And, f and surf with your orgasmic edges and they come and they wave off and I, I you know it's, it's, just, it's, it's, it's like women can do that by nature they have multiple orgasms easy and, and we men have the same capacity when we know how to do it it's the relaxation part in the nervous system when you can reach that each and one of us can have multi multiple orgasms without climaxes why, why would I climax if, I, if a climax takes five seconds, but I can be there for an hour or two? It's just like, fuck, I just like <laughs> put my climax in a kind of sacred corner of reproduction and that's it. Okay, last one. Who hasn't spoken? Um, I haven't spoken, so I'm, yeah, it's very interesting, but in the same way, I'm... I wish I had more information and more, maybe also advices and um, yeah. So I'm not sure how I feel now. I'm not bad, curious, but um, in a way unzufrieden. I don't know the English. Oh, word. good. <laughs> Uncertain. This is good. Please feel free to reach out. I just, I, I mean, the, the the link is still in the chat. I don't know if if it was there when I said that in the beginning. Uh, so, so take the link, each one of you, just like jump on a call. Let's have a conversation together for your individual questions. That makes it really simple and easy. And then I can individually talk with you about where you are. Please watch that again. Get your questions answered. And if you have any questions, please bring them to a call. And I'm totally happy to talk more. And if you're interested in this Monday calls, 90 minutes a week, whenever you want to, um, uh, ask me where and how that happens and uh, you're more than welcome to join it's a nice group of international people we speak English <laughs> okay thank you so much have a beautiful evening and enjoy the rest of the class and uh, I hope to see you somewhere bye